forward. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, now I think it's on live stream. So I don't know if Pastor Glenn's coming on or not. Um, there we go. It's on Facebook now. We're we're live on Facebook, so I figured that out. Nice. So I'm just going to drop that down. And can you see that better now? Yeah. Words are not cut off, but I don't know if it got too small. Yep, Morning Star is live on Facebook. Perfect. Okay, leave that before it gets weird. All right. Well, <clears throat> if others would like to join, they certainly can. Um, and let's see, Rod's back. So let's start with. Uh, the prayer of the day. Okay. Lord God, your loving kindness nice. always goes, goes before, before us and, and follows after, after us. us. Summon, Summon us into your light, your light and direct, and direct our steps in, in the ways of goodness, of goodness that, that come, come through the cross of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys. Um, well, Susie called me, so hopefully she called all the other people to. Yeah, and I, and you know, like it's just like taking your car to the mechanic. Nothing happens. <laughs> There's nothing going on right now. I don't see any snow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but apparent, apparently, there's a big blob of snow coming this way. I don't know. So. Yeah, well, my son said on the radar that Lincoln's getting it now. So it okay. will be here by 11 o'clock. So. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to let my dog in because he's knocking at the door. <laughs> oh, Susie just texted me in Wahoo where she lives. It's snowing heavily already. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't like when, you know, they they forecast, you know, gloom and doom and then nothing happens and then it makes you look like an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, last time they closed all the schools, we got nothing. So. I know. <clears throat> I know. Well, uh, we've got a reading from Isaiah. I don't know. I think there's some folks that are probably watching passively, but... If they, they chime in here, then I'll let them in. And but there's three of us and four of these, so all right. I, yeah. I can start. Uh, there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish in the former time. The Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Well, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, <clears throat> this is written before they went into exile. This is first Isaiah, so they would. Um, I have a note that says they have yeah. They are experienced the gloom and defeat by Assyrian military forces. Okay. Yeah, so Nebuchadnezzar came over and, and got him. So, I guess that would be first exile with grief. The cats need to calm down. Sorry. Yeah. What, yeah. I mean, what happened was after they were after they were over in, you know, uh, modern day 
Iraq, I guess, is where it is now, in the Euphrates Valley. They uh, they started writing things down because they were afraid they were going to lose the oral, the oral traditions, and and uh, that's actually when they started writing the Torah. Okay. Because all of those stories were were uh, you know were oral in tradition, so the the priests and the there's like three different writers and well just the, the priestly tradition the priests started writing things down so they were afraid that they were going to lose the people that had all of the historic knowledge and of these stories anyway um yeah nine this is um first isaiah and <clears throat> I mean, the the one thing that stands out for me is the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light just because we're we're in, you know, we just got done with with Christmas and that's been that's been such an emphasis. Um, but the hope that comes from that um, and what it was like for them to live in a, a land of deep darkness um, and the hope that 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 you know, gave them. Yeah. Verses three and four are all these like examples of how they will feel joy and hope, but they don't seem all like as with joy at the harvest. Okay. That's a good thing to be joyful about as people exult when dividing plunder. That's like a really different variety of joy. I would say <laughs> of, you know, after battle you're dividing the plunder that you have taken from the enemy um yeah those aren't exactly the same types of joy to me but i also have not been a conquered people um where that sort of joy of dividing plunder has been a part of my experience or well, something the, uh, I wanted. Yeah. In my Bible, uh, chapter eight, the heading for that is Assyria, the Lord's instrument. So <laughs> he was attributing the fact that Assyria was able to conquer Israel, Judah. Because uh, at this time, I think it, it was just Israel that they con conquered, not Judah, right? Wasn't this the first exile? But anyway, the, the writer is attributing all of their problems to the fact that God used Assyria to wake up Israel and to uh, uh, you know get them out of their bad ways and to to fear God again. And chapter nine in my Bible, which, you know, we just read the first part of it, is titled To Us a Child is Born, which yeah. you know, points directly to Jesus. But, you know, at that time, you know, the people wouldn't have really known that, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't have understood that. Right. Yeah. Uh, my Bible says <clears throat> this passage served originally as an oracle. For the coronation of a Judean king, probably Hezekiah, it celebrates the ascension of the new king with the traditional ideals of Davidic kingship. Um, it, it goes on further. It talks about what you were talking about, Rod, in verse 6, a child's son, the divine birth or adoption of the king was announced on his coronation day. And then it refers to Psalm 2. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Those right. are all our nation names given Egyptian kings at their ascension. I did not know that. Mm. <clears throat> but yeah, and then it talks about Israel's failure to learn from the past judgments as a warning to Judah. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, I'm trying to figure out... Um, you know, as I often do when I when I see these for the first time every three years or so, um, 
you know what what the what the connection is between the texts and you know the the call story of the disciples and where the where the connection is between Matthew and Isaiah but I guess I guess well, we can get there. Jesus actually quotes this verse was one through is that two he quotes it in the gospel reading yeah okay there you go yeah um yeah because he's in the land of zebulon and naphtali so he's like saying like this is a fulfillment of that prophecy back in isaiah 9 yeah um yeah and you know jesus message was one of justice from the oppressors so well and, and he he knew the scriptures better than anybody else so he could he could just bring them up to quote them when he needed them so yeah isn't that amazing yeah i don't know i find that i find that interesting that i mean i guess they a lot of them the priests would have known but it just <clears throat> I just find it fascinating that he is able to to recall those so instantly. Well, and that's another reason to to write them down so that people all recall them the same way instead of uh, putting your own spin on, <clears throat> on the scriptures right you're telling them to somebody else yeah, <clears throat> yeah i guess well, that's why it was so important to have a consul of a lot of scholars to put together the bible and to uh keep doing the translations when we do it mm-hmm it definitely you know points for us points to jesus and for them pointed to somebody who was going to come and and take care of them somebody who was going to come and and take care of them somebody who was going to come and and take care of them somebody who was going to come and i don't know where <laughs> the never-ending loop of somebody going to take care of them. the never-ending yeah, loop of somebody going to take care of them. the never-ending yeah, loop of somebody yeah. going to take care of them. how do we get the echo how do we get the echo how do we get the echo Okay. Well, I don't know if that helped or not. 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 Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. I think we have our answer. Do you think we have our answer? Do you think we have our answer? Do you think we have our answer? What? Okay. I've had that happen when somebody had on two, uh, somebody had on two, like they were on their phone and on their computer, but like they were on their phone and I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? No, yes. I don't know if it's something on my end or what's going on here. Something on my end or what's going on here. Something your dog did. Something your dog did. Probably. Something your dog did. Probably. 
Yeah, that's is that's what happens when you have two devices in the same room. Yeah, but I don't. I just closed Facebook, my connection to Facebook to see if that would help. But I think it did. Yeah, I okay. think that did it. I don't hear well, it anymore. Okay. Well, let's go to Psalm. I can read the Psalm. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold, is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted above my enemies who surround me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me and turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. I haven't read this before um, anybody's gone into like surgery before, but I might have to take note of it and mark it down. Yeah. It seems like um, it seems like that would be a comforting psalm for for some people. Yeah. Well, it's, <clears throat> you know, one of David's pleas is he's, you know, fleeing persecution or whatever. And, <clears throat> excuse me, something we could pray every day. I tell you, I, I tell you, when I was, when I was sick, uh, last couple of weeks there was there was a couple of days when that's all I did I mean I just prayed because there was nothing that was helping and uh I wish I would have I wish I would have turned to the psalm well I wish you would have listened to your wife yeah. <laughs> that too yeah I got no one to blame but myself but you know, I had the flu twice when I was younger, and <clears throat> I'm I'm very good now about getting my flu shot every year, and I try to get it early, but I'm old and I forget. But I, I don't ever want to feel like I felt those two times. You, the first time I think I was young, and I don't even know if they had flu shots then, but yeah, I can remember just laying on the floor. I was married but i'm laying on the floor crying for my mother because i was <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah miserable i don't want to feel like that again and well the, the the whole line do not hide your face from me it's like you know if i could have if if i could have seen god's face that would have that would have been comforting but yeah, yes, or at least a sign from God. I think the the sign <laughs> from God was probably my wife who was taking care of me, and um, as I'm just as grouchy as you could be, and <clears throat> just having patience for for me. But anyway, I th I think Psalm 27 is. I mean, that's a. I think it's a. I need to take note of that because I think it's a comforting comforting psalm yes well even i think 
you were saying, you know, you, you wished to see the face of God, like, hear my voice, O Lord, when I call, have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message, seek my face. So it's like, answer me, God. And then like, from your own heart, you get God's answer. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. I think that's really cool of having God in our hearts too. When we are in that sort of desperate place to know that God is with us in our hearts. And then how how do we seek seek God's face in the world? Well, the thing that's interesting to me is that, you know, back when Moses was leading the Israelites, it was only it was only Moses that could see God. You know, and what was it like? Well, I mean, what would it have been like for the Israelites? They couldn't experience the same, the God, the same way that Moses did. That's always, that's always kind of troubled me a little bit about those stories is, you know, Moses was the only one that was able to, to interact, but otherwise God would manifest God's self, you know, in a, in a pillar of fire and in other ways, but it was only Moses who had that one-on-one experience and Mm -hmm. well yeah you think about that when they're going through the wilderness and they're all complaining because all they have is manna to eat and things are happening to them and you know if god would have just appeared to everybody you know at once and said you know stop complaining at least you're getting (laughs) getting food i'm here for you look what i'm doing i exactly Uh, yeah and uh but you know we we all have to just have faith in the the grace of god so we haven't seen him but we sure heard all the stories about his his miracles and you know every day we we see him in things that happen but it, wouldn't it be nice if he'd just appear out of the clouds to everybody and say, you know, hey, I'm really here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, and I, I I think about that a lot, actually. And um, you know, the the psalm really I think addresses the issue that, you know, it would be nice. We don't see him physically, so you know, how do we see God in other ways and that's you know that's that's the hard part about faith i think is that you know it's it's not always so obvious for us maybe it's obvious for god but you know we we're not always smart enough to know that god is right there even when you know as we question like you know i'm coughing to death <laughs> my lungs are burning and you know like where is god and why am i suffering like this Mm -hmm. yeah well and i think even the psalmist takes us on that journey starting with i wish i could spend all of my time in the temple and seek you there right like that israelite understanding that god was in the temple um and then sort of leading all the way to my heart speaks your message. Like maybe I don't have to be in the temple to seek you. And then we know that through Jesus who tore the veil in the temple that, yeah, you don't have to go any special place to find God. The God is all around us and within us. Yeah. Well, God is not confined to the temple. Right. And also it's not confined to specific people either. Right. I mean that that was the beauty of the the curtain being torn in two it was that it implied that now everyone has access to to a god experience not just the priest or the men or you know what i mean and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um yeah 
Well, I like, you know, Pastor Glenn and I have been talking a lot about this, you know, lately with the, with the remodel and, <clears throat> you know, it's where, where is Jesus? I mean, obviously we're doing the remodel because we believe that God is in this, this place and it's, and we surround God and God surrounds us as a community in a, in a place, but God is also outside of Morningstar, the building at least. And, you know, we're, we're, we're called to go out into the world and, and to see God and, you know, through, through the lens of each of our own, our hearts and our faith. But, um, so it's not just the one place it's, you know, how do we see God out in the world? And, uh, I don't know. I think that's the beauty of the church is that you you're guaranteed a God sighting when you come to worship. I, you know, you're, you're absolutely guaranteed, but how do we take that out into the world? And, um, as we look and search for where God is, God sightings in the world. Anyway. Well, and maybe it's not just taking it out into the world, but inviting the world into our facility being warm and opening open and uh, you know making it a place where the world knows they're going to be comforted that too so, i think i saw greta's cat one too many times i'm getting all stuffy <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> well there's yeah. well, moose is right there <clears throat> oh yeah hey bud <laughs> yeah dogs don't bother me but cats get me all stuffy so yeah. he's in his he's in his spot he's a loyal a loyal friend yeah yeah my cats just get jealous when i spend too much time on a device they say hey i'm the important one yeah i'm, I'm here give me some attention yeah yeah oh it's yeah well when 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 angie and i come home at at night and then we're trying to talk to each other that's when moose gets in the middle and tries to vie for <laughs> our attention it's really annoying actually <laughs> and, um first corinthians yeah, let me see if i can read it first corinthians the first chapter now i appeal to you brothers and sisters by the name of the lord jesus christ that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos or I belong to Cephas or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I be that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel. And not with elegant wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Paul needs to work on his administrative skills. <laughs> he obviously, he's losing track of who he's baptized. I mean, he needs to keep a record of that yes well he at we least do a better job of that now <laughs> he at least admits that he's not explaining this with eloquent wisdom <laughs> yeah. yeah well it, no go ahead well that's you know one of the things when we have communion <clears throat> in the church and that's why i think it's so wonderful that the lutheran church change the the service so that instead of once a month we do communion every week 
because it's it's just such a powerful message and you know i i know we're not supposed to uh idolize symbols and i don't really idolize the cross but having the cross in that church just to make us think about what jesus did for us every sunday when we do communion and uh, i mean i wear a cross around my neck every day to remind me of what christ did it's it's just a powerful message to see that and it's it's just Christ's power. It doesn't matter what a wonderful pastor, you know, that, that that you are, Pastor Chris, you know, how eloquent you speak or how stumbling some other pastors are sometimes. Well, because that's it's some, you know, it, it's Christ. That's that's it. You know, you're you're carrying his message. Well, that's yeah, I think. You know, so often in ministry, we get these, um, because a pastor is such an important part of the community, but it's, it's not the only, it's not the most, it's not the most important piece of the community. And there's so many, you know, it's pastors that get wrapped up into this cult of personality, and then they become the Pied Pipers. And I wonder if that's, that's what was going on in in this congregation that Paul's addressing was you know people were putting their focus on the personality instead of the met, the story of salvation um if that was if that's what Paul was trying to get them to understand that it's not about um it's not about following the worshiping the leader it's about worshiping God yeah, it's not the messenger, it's the message that uh, he's bringing or she's bringing. Right. Mm -hmm. I I think this is a great text for churches to read only because it speaks to the reality of uh, divisions and quarrels and things like that. I mean, we we it's a human organization at, at, you know, when it comes, well, it boils down to it and we're all fallible when we're all sin, sinful people. And, you know, I think when congregations lose focus on the cross and they lose focus on mission and their purpose, then they start focusing on, on these, all, all the other, the things that divide them. And I think Paul is, trying to address that that um it's in the name of our lord jesus christ that we all gather not apollos or cephas um things like that yeah mm -hmm. um and i think so many times you know the the congregation a congregation will be blessed by you know a very strong uh leader that you know because of the power of his oratory or his personality or her personality uh you know the church grows and becomes so big and you know then people start thinking you know it's it's this pastor and that pastor moves to texas and the yeah the church falls apart right so it's 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 not and and i i fall prey to that too it uh you know if somebody's very eloquent you know i i enjoy listening to them better <laughs> than i do when you know somebody is not the greatest speaker but he's still bringing the same great message yeah and uh you know that's you just have to listen and it, it, as this verse says it's all about God anyway. It's, it's, it's not about Pastor Chris or Pastor Glenn or Greta or, it, you know, Pastor Bob, whoever he might be. It's yeah. not the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, no, it's a real, it's a real dangerous situation when um, congregations are clergy focused instead of mission focused. And 
Well, I think it's dangerous for the the pastors, mm -hmm. ministers also, because it, it is they get so much power and glory, and then you know it's they have this cult following, and they they can uh, many times get lost in that. Yeah, we. <laughs> Glenn, Pastor Glenn and I were talking um, a little bit about when when Pastor Traub came over from <clears throat> from Coons and he came to Morningstar and he was at didn't realize he was at Coons for 28 years. Whoa! And then he came to to Morningstar. Well, you know, at Pastor Ashley Martin Ashley had already you know really established the congregation as a mission start and. You know, it just it just lent itself to a little bit of tension, and it, and it it really wasn't anybody's fault. It's just that, you know, Pastor Traub had this reputation of being the he was called the Prince of the Pulpit, and and I you know I I can talk about it because my, my mother was a listened to him preach when she was a little girl, and he used to to point, and uh, he was he was a phenomenal you know preacher, but. We had two, it was two different styles of pastoral ministry. And, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes that just doesn't work um, because of that. And, um, and that, and that's a natural thing to, that's a natural conflict to have happen. And, but I think, you know, help, helping Morningstar, or helping another congregation just continue to focus on keeping the main thing, the main thing you can't go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. you just can't go wrong. And sometimes I think as, as a pastor, the best thing we can do is, is get out of the way um, and let the Holy Spirit do its work through the people that are there. Um, yeah. Sometimes I, that's the best leadership you can do. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, Pastor Ashley was a, a wonderful speaker minister i never got to hear him until he was you know in his older age but he still was a very powerful speaker at a powerful message but you know i think the the pressure when he was a younger man got to him and you know he he couldn't take that pressure yeah so well, he you know both of those pastors you know really um shared the message of Christ and really brought Christ alive to Morningstar. So, you know, I we give him credit for that. And uh yes. <laughs> but I think it's just human nature to to follow uh, to want to follow a leader and you know, um I think this is just a nice reminder that well, okay, that's fine, but what we're really following is Jesus and mm -hmm. and the message of the cross yeah but anyway i could go on and on talking about corinth i i love talking about the greek um churches but yeah uh, i probably put all of you to sleep so <laughs> why don't you read us the gospel then or credit can do that well, i'm gonna get it out of my bible because it just let me look it up here. Matthew 4, 12 through, it's a wonderful story, <clears throat> 12 through 23. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. And here we get the Isaiah text. Land of Zebulun, land of Natali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From this time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. 
Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As they went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The, the next verses, which, which are not part of the pericope for Sunday is, so his fame spread throughout all Syria and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics. And he cured them and great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. I don't know why they leave, I don't know why they leave that out. I mean, that's to me, that just talks about this. And I'll use the word charisma because the charis is the word in Greek for grace. Mm -hmm. um, he had this graciousness, this about him that compelled people to follow. Um and you know, I'll shut up. But the the one piece that I always wonder about is, you know, where do we still? How can we still see that that passion for following Jesus today? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, uh, it. Where is that? Where is that that passion for us to to follow Jesus today? And I think that's the challenge of the church. Well, I, I think it's, you know, individually, we each have that passion within us in a different manner. But I think in the church itself, I think one of the reasons that non-denominational Christian churches are growing much faster than you know Lutheran churches or Presbyterian churches is because they can react more quickly to current events they can structure their service any way that they choose and really lead their congregations you know to help the community at a certain time or or to really discuss you know what's going on and that's where i think that you know the, the lutheran church is because it's very rare that you know you will see uh, uh, a lutheran presbyterian church growing exponentially and i don't know pastor if you well you were here when king of kings was just growing mm -hmm. tremendously but that was you know it was a denominational church but they really treated themselves they, they had some strange pastors there doing you know cindy and i went there for a couple months you had to there were so many people there you had to check your kids in and out of Sunday school mm. and they had a, a parking lot ministry to help get cars in and out of the parking lot wow you know before and after the service and uh you know then you know the the main pastor had some some problems and you know it's probably uh, just like we were quoting in Isaiah that, you know, God used Assyria to wake up Israel. Well, God used some action to wake up that church. And, yeah. you know, it, it basically, you know, they were putting their, their faith in the pastor or pastors and not in the message that was, you know, coming to them. But that uh yeah we went we went there one day and the the 
the pastor, I think it was the, the last time we went, the pastor with a ponytail, I don't remember his name, said, well, uh, and he, he was giving the, the creed, and he said, well, uh, I have to do this, you know, <laughs> and he just was dancing around while he was doing the creed, and it just, why, why do you have to, it, it'd be better not to even do it than yeah. to, than to uh, make an issue about it. Yeah, or it, it really, it, to me, you were throwing that in the face of God. You were, you were mocking. It just, mm -hmm. you know, it was showing. Well, and, and, and then all the people who really appreciate, you know, saying that together as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you know, the church is imperfect. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's, it's, uh, is, is imperfect as it is, though, the Holy Spirit is still, is still, you know, there. Um, well, put me in charge. I'll fix it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it's, you uh, are in charge. <laughs> everybody has a voice and um you know i just i think again it's like who do we follow you know are we following our own egos or are we following jesus and that's that to me is is grounding um you know and we're following jesus and jesus is the epitome of humility and so if we follow Jesus, what we're really celebrating is, you know, a humbleness that that comes through faith in Jesus who died. Um, so I think if we would just simply remind ourselves of that, you know, as the church, then we would avoid a lot of a lot of those kinds of issues. Well, I that has been a, a big problem of mine because I've, I've always had a big ego and thought I was the, the smartest person in the room. And I just, I have to get out of the way and listen to the message from God and read the scriptures like I'm listening, not trying to put my voice in it. and. You know, it's just like in in these Bible studies, uh, like today, I, I talk too much because I've got so much to say, but it's really because I am seeing God in a much different light than than I have before. And I think it's because I'm trying to get out of the way and, and listen. Well, that's what you just said. I think I, I was looking at the screen. I mean, that's kind of the definition of repentance, right? Because repentance is turning back to God and sin is turning away from God. So it's, it's like turning back to God is, you know, like you said, you know, getting out of the way. Well, it's really not just getting out of the way. It's putting God first. And it's prioritizing our lives in such a way that God is leading us through life. Um, but, you know, but the egos and, and, you know, the need to be right and, the need, you know, those are all human. I mean, those are real things for all of us. And, <clears throat> and I think we all want to be liked and we all want to be, you know, uh, important in our own way. And, and we are. But we still we still are called to follow, you know, God. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, that's I need I need to constantly rod and I mean I I need that hear that over and over again. Otherwise, I will drift into this. Eh, I've got this. I can I can do this on my own kind of attitude. You know. Um, 
a recent example for me, um, we, if you were around in December, we um, tied those fleece blankets after mm. the Christmas program. Um, and that had been like a sort of a several month thing. Like the youth worked on cutting the little strips and then I like sent some home with one of the families to keep cutting the other ones. Cause you know, anyway, it's so like several people helped cut them. And then at the Advent festival, after the Christmas program, we tied two and a half of them. And then the other two and a half Susie took home and did after Christmas. And so it was like all these hands worked on these blankets. But for me, that was sort of like a service project for doing the sake for the sake of doing a service project to have something to do it's like not very cost effective to hand make these blankets it's really more cost effective to just buy a fleece blanket because the price of fabric is so expensive so mm. it was like the whole time i'm thinking like yeah we probably won't do this next year this is a lot of work it's really expensive we could have just bought these blankets but Simone took them to Table Grace last week because um, that's when they were finally done and we were, I was able to see her and give them to her. And um, she wrote a beautiful reflection on what happened when she gave them away at the cafe that, you know, she started talking to people, listening to their stories, offered them a blanket if they wanted one. And the people were so excited to get this clean, fluffy, hand-tied blanket. Um, she said everybody that got them either lives in a shelter or on the street. Um, so it was people that really did need a new fluffy blanket. Um, they were excited that there was a variety of colors to choose from, you know. So it was like the thing that I thought was, you know, maybe a waste of my time and resources was the thing that really got the most out of this whole months long project, right? Like there wasn't a the, the spirit was working in ways that I wasn't even looking for the spirit to work. Um, and I think is, yeah, a beautiful testament to even when we don't understand what we're doing um, or we don't think we're making a big difference that God is still moving within what we're doing. Um, and these yeah. mundane tasks are really impactful and meaningful um, beyond what we could do on our own. Yeah, no, that's a great story, Greta. Yeah. And that's, again, again that's an example of, you know, getting out of our own way. Mm -hmm. um, because you had to get, you had to let go of some of the thoughts that you had about that project and, and let, and just let the Holy Spirit take hold of it and see. And then, so that was a great, a great message for you, but it was also a great, a great, um, a great gift for all those people that received it. Yep. <clears throat> well, and even if you knew that there was a, a need, and I guess we all know there isn't a need mm -hmm. for people to have that, would have been so easy just go out and buy some blankets and take them down there and have them given right. away. But this was a process you know, that, mm -hmm. that all the people went through and, you know, can hear the story from Simone and know that they had a, a piece of helping these people. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, <clears throat> For sure. Every, every once in a while, uh, God brings people into our lives because he wants us to, uh, have the joy of being able to help them i think so well thank you for all for being here and uh yeah thanks for you know thanks for dialing in or coming zooming in or whatever you would call it um it's still not snowing <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm yeah i hope we get i don't like snow but yeah, I mean, well, I like it if you're going to go skiing. Yeah, well, my my skiing days are over, but uh, I still still like the beauty of the snow and it the fact that it brings the birds out and uh, mm -hmm. you know just it's uh, moisture. It's I think we need the moisture. Oh yeah, we definitely do. Yeah, they said even if we get 
five or six inches of snow, will it'll just almost bring us up to where we're supposed to be for mm -hmm. this year. So or this season. Yeah, the trees, the trees need the moisture, I think. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, thank you so much and um for flexibility and uh doing the online and close with the Lord's Prayer. All right. Our Come Father on. who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, be done on earth, earth as, as it is in Give us this day our daily bread. Day bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, trespasses. As we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from, from, from evil. For thine is the thine kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the, power and the glory forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys have a blessed day and enjoy the beauty of the snow when it comes. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Have a great week. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.